Okay, guys, so we're back with uh, week 10. So we're in our 10th week already. This is Chem 4, week 10, video number one. Now, this is the beginning of the organic chemistry part of the course. This is kind of the middle third of the GOB course. So we're going to focus this week on chapter 11, next week on chapter 12, and then we're going to skip chapter 13 and come back to it later. So we're going to do chapters 11, 12, and 14 in the next three weeks. That should cover our organic chemistry portion of the course. So everything you see today and everything you see this week in the next three videos is all chapter 11 stuff. Okay. And let's just get started. So chapters 11, 12, and 14, organic chemistry. Introduction to organic chemistry. Organic chemistry is the study of carbon compounds. And so let's do some background on carbon. Uh, the first two pages will be review for the most part. Carbon is tetravalent. That means it likes to form four bonds uh, or four equivalent bonds. These two examples are methane, CH4, and ethane, C2H6. All right, so I've got the uh, structures there drawn out, and I've also got the condensed formulas. The next bullet point says organic molecules have covalent bonds. So remember when we talked about covalent bonding versus ionic bonding, covalent bonding is when we have the shared electron pair, like the tug of war between uh, two atoms. So organic molecules have covalent bonds. Organic molecules can contain polar covalent bonds and nonpolar covalent bonds. You're going to see a lot of CH bonds, and we can assume that those are nonpolar for the most part. Um, we will assume CH bonds are nonpolar, and then that one C-Cl bond I had there is a polar bond because Cl is more electronegative than carbon. All right, top of page two of our notes. Just making a few bullet points here and getting through some of the basics of carbon chemistry before we move on to organic chemistry functional groups and before we move on to alkanes. All right, so carbon can form multiple bonds with neighboring atoms. When I say multiple bonds, I mean either a double bond or a triple bond, all right? So here's an example. This is called acetylene. Um, the IUPAC name is ethyne, but the common name is acetylene, C2H2. It's got a triple bond there. Uh, there's also lots of double bonds, and, there's, and those are all multiple bonds, double bonds, triple bonds. All right, next bullet point, organic molecules have specific three-dimensional shapes. A few chapters ago, we learned about tetrahedral geometries. So CH4, as an example, would have the following tetrahedral arrangement of atoms around the central carbon. Organic molecules, while they contain almost ex exclusively carbon and hydrogen, when we talk about alkanes and alkenes, organic molecules can contain uh, oxygen and nitrogen, as well as the halogens. So, these are just some examples. We'll get to more of these later. I'm just kind of drawing them out. You have them in your notes, but you can see we have a C single bond N, double bond N, triple bond N. We have a C single bond O, double bond O, triple bond O, and the like. All right, so the page of notes that we're on right now is when we really start to talk about the different organic, uh, the different uh, functional groups in organic molecules, all right? Now, the first one are alkanes, and that's going to be the focus, the very beginning focus of chapter 11. So right now, we're just getting through the kind of uh, the, the early steps of organic chemistry. All right. So families of organic molecules. All right. Organic molecules contain one or more functional groups. All right. So this is kind of like the alphabet, right? We have thousands and thousands and thousands of words in the English language, but we only have 26 letters in the alphabet. Same thing with organic molecules. Although there's 18 million organic molecules, they're all classified into just 14 families or 14 functional groups. So the first one is alkane. Only carbon-carbon and carbon-hydrogen bonds, both of which are nonpolar, right? So an example, ethane, nothing but single carbon-carbon and single CH bonds. Number two are alkenes. Alkenes have a double bonded carbon ethene as an example. Number three, so we've got alkane single bond, alkene double bond carbons, alkyne triple bond carbons. So ethane, 
ethene, and now ethine. So one, two, three, four, you see one, two, three, four up here? Alkane, alkene, alkyne, aromatic ring. This is the focus of chapter 11, just so you know that. Okay, so aromatic ring. This is alternating double and single bonds in the formation of a ring. This happens to be a benzene ring. Now, when you look at one, two, three, and four, the focus of chapter 11, uh, there's nothing but carbon, carbon, and carbon hydrogen bonds. So these guys are called hydrocarbons. They contain only C and H, only carbon and hydrogen, all right? Now, when we get to the fifth functional group, it's alkyl halide, where X can be any one of the halogens, F, Cl, Br, or I. So if you have a C, a carbon, single bonded to an alkyl, to a halide, I mean, you have what's known as an alkyl halide. The example I've drawn is chloromethane. In other words, methyl chloride is the common name for it, okay? All right, so the sixth functional group are the alcohols. An alcohol is classified as a carbon being single bonded to an OH functional group. The one I've drawn is methanol. Uh, functional group number seven are the ethers. Ether is when you have a carbon single bond oxygen single bonded to a second carbon, a COC bond group. The one I've drawn here is dimethyl ether. Number eight is an amine, A-M-I-N-E. It's got a little NH2 group on it. That NH2 group makes it an amine. The one I've drawn is methylamine. Number nine are the aldehydes. Aldehyde has something called a carbonyl carbon, which is a C double bonded to an O. And in the case of an aldehyde, that C double bond to O is also attached to a hydrogen. This one is called ethanol. So that's always a terminal carbon there if it's attached to an H, right? It's at the end of a chain. Number 10 are ketones. This is when we have kind of like an internal carbonyl group. Here we have a C double bond O right in the middle. This one happens to be acetone. Number 11, carboxylic acid. Again, we've got that C double bond O, but this time it's attached to an OH as well. This is a carboxylic acid. The example I've drawn is acetic acid. Number 12, we won't see many of these. Uh, these are the anhydrides. This is when you have two carbonyl C double bond O groups with an oxygen single bonded in between. An ester, we will see a lot of esters. And this is when you have a carbon double bonded to an O that's also attached to a carbon on the left, and in this case, an oxygen on the right. All right, and amide was a C double bond O within an NH2 off of it. And we're gonna go through all these over time, right? Chapter 11 is the first four, then chapter 12, then chapter 14. Here's an example. Locate all the functional groups. So I'm gonna draw out this molecule, and then we wanna circle the functional groups and write down what they are. So in A, I have, what do I have? I see I have an OH group, right? That OH group is an alcohol group. I also have a carboxylic acid group, a C double bond O with an OH. So I circle them and label them. In B, I have the alkene, that's a carbon, carbon double bond. And then I have the ester, which is a C double bond O, and then an O with a carbon. In C, this is a benzene ring. So if we were going to name the functional group, however, it's not the benzene ring. We would call it aromatic ring. So that big old ring there in C is an aromatic ring. And then I see we have an NH2 group, which is an amino group. I'm sorry, an amine group. And then we have the C double bond O, OH is a carboxylic acid. All right. So these are very important to know how to do ones like these. In B, the CH2 up there in the alkene, it's really a carbon double bonded to a carbon. So be careful with the way they write that. Second example, let's propose structures for the following, all right? C2H4, and I want to make sure it contains an aldehyde. Well, the first thing I should do, well, here's B. B is C3H6O2, and this one has to contain a, carbox a carboxylic acid, all right? So in A, C2H4, the first thing you should do is draw the, al the aldehyde functional group, which I do, C double bond O with an H, and then I've only got room for one more carbon, put the three H's on it, and I'm finished. Carboxylic acid, C double bond O with an OH hanging off of it, either side. And then I run the other two carbons off of the C double bond O carbon, put
put my H's around so that all carbon's octets are filled, and we get that final st structure right there, okay? All right, so next page of our notes, got a double line there, means I'm moving on to something, and I'm moving on to our very first functional group. Remember, there's 14 of them. These are the alkanes, okay? Chapter 11 is alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, aromatic rings. Alkanes, these are hydrocarbons. They contain only carbon and hydrogen, having only single bonds. So with one carbon, it's methane. Two carbons is ethane. And you notice every carbon has four attachments around it. That's what happens with single bonds. Three carbons, so it goes methane, ethane, three carbon chain. All right, this molecule is called propane. All right, four carbons, we have a four carbon chain, C, 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 throw them all out. But I can also have my very first branch. When I get to four carbons, I can have a branch. So the first one is just called butane, all right? This is the straight chain, four carbons. And then I can have a chain of three carbons with a little branch above it, okay? So this is called the branched chain, four carbon alkane. Just so happens they're both C4H10, all right? So these guys are what's known as constitutional isomers. That means they have the same chemical formula, but they have different connections of atoms, all right? So the first one was butane. The second one we'll learn later is called 2-methylpropane. Five carbons. Now we're getting more carbons. Chances are we're going to have more different branched opportunities. The first one I always draw are, is the five-carbon chain. I'm leaving out the hydrogens for simplicity, but you should always include the hydrogens on a quiz or on an exam. So the first one is the five carbon straight chain. The second one, I have a branch on carbon two. And then on the third one, I have two branches on carbon two. Okay, so these are the only three ways to draw a five carbon uh, C5H12 molecule. Straight chain and two branched chain alkanes. Okay, and we'll worry about naming them later on in, uh, in this video. So we have three constitutional isomers. Same formula, C5H12, but they all have different connections of atoms. All right, so I'm actually going to define isomers now for you so you have it in your notes rather than me just saying it out loud. Isomers, compounds with the same molecular formula, for example, C5H12 above, but different structures. There's no way to superimpose them. There's no way to flip them and make them match. They're different structures, all right? These are called constitutional isomers, as I've said. So just to really hammer it home, same molecular formula, but different connections of atoms, all right? Different structures. All right, so if I had six carbons, you can imagine I've got more carbons to work with. I could probably make more branched chain alkanes from that, all right? So, moving on, let's get to drawing organic structures. So, what do I mean by this? Well, as an example, what are two ways to draw C2H6O? Well, I've only got two carbons here and an oxygen. Hydrogens are always just, because remember, if you remember from Lewis structures, hydrogens just like to dangle off and only have that one single bond to it. So that I can only really draw a CCO backbone or COC backbone. So I draw my COC backbone on the right, my CCO backbone on the left, and I just make everyone happy with hydrogens around them so that their octets are filled, okay? I'm leaving out the lone pairs on the oxygen. There's two lone pairs on each of these oxygens. So the one on the left I've drawn is an alcohol, got the OH off of the carbon, and the one on the right, COC, that's an ether. All right, another example, draw the following isomers of C5H12 as condensed structures. So on the last page of notes, we have the three isomers, right? But now I need to draw them condensed. So here I am, at first I'm drawing them all blown out with all the carbon hydrogens being shown. There's my straight chain, all right? The second one is going to be CH three on the end, and I got my CH3 off of carbon two, and then the two more carbons, all right? So now what am I doing? I'm condensing them. You see how I write it? CH3, CH2, 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 CH3. 
In the straight chain, the two end caps are CH3. Everything in between is the CH2. Look at the CH2s go vertically, right, with the CH3 end caps. B is a little different. I got my CH3, then I got a CH with the CH3 going up. Then I got my CH2 with my CH3 end cap. Pentane is the one on the left. 2-methylbutane is B. We're going to learn how to name later. I'm just putting the names in now. So when you come back, you can practice the naming. All right, C, this is the third way to write. This is my third constitutional isomer. Okay, I got carbon in the middle attached to no hydrogens. And so I need to condense that. And I condense it down the best I can and then put a box around it. All right, so that last one there is 2,2-dimethylpropane. It does have a common name, which is neopentane. All right. Again, we'll learn how to name later. I'm just putting the names in now just so you have them. All right, next page of our notes, it talks about the shapes of organic molecules. What does this mean? Well, we'll take a look at this in the next chapter. I'm sorry, in the next video. We're on chapter 11. We just covered chapter 11, video one. The rest of this week, I have chapter 11, video number two, chapter 11, video number three. All right, so this is video number one of three for this week. All right, so I'll see you next time.